Oh, I thought of another, it's okay to be stupid. Not sure how long the, I can make that video. There's just so many great stories, but uh, this was me on the job. And uh, we had a, you know, back then I was working in a huge, huge warehouse. I did all the programming for the cranes that uh, took the unipacks loaded with uh, sweats up into this huge warehouse. It looked like the, well, you could have housed the space shuttle in there. Let's just put it that way. It was that big and, you know, the, the, the cranes would come in on, everything was on, on autopilot and I, I programmed all of that. And uh, so this one particular day, it, and back then you'd hit the, uh, the old VAX computers to date myself, you know, programming in C and C++. And uh, so you would hit the break key and that would break you out to the local prompt and then you could start another session on your on your PC. Well, what I I did not know was that in the, in the actual computer room itself, uh, where the operators were, because back then we had operators, um, if you hit the break key, <laughs> it, it, it took the computers down. <laughs> so, so I mean, now you got to remember a, a, a place like that. That's a massive operation. And you know you've got hundreds and upon hundreds of people on the floor, you know, uh, working on uh, sweats and you know package them into the. This was back when we had textile manufacturing in the United States before uh, we gave it all to China, and uh, and so uh, so when I uh, when I hit the brake key and took those computers down, I took the whole plant down. So now you've got hundreds and hundreds of people idling. And just sitting around and man if you can imagine those floor managers uh, they were hot oh my god what the hell's going on why are we why is everything shut down well Kirk Kirk hit the brake key <laughs> so, so and it did it took a, it took us away to re completely bring those computers up from scratch because that was a hard hard shutdown and uh, I don't think I did any damage but uh, and then of course after that we took a safety precaution and and disabled the brake key so that nobody could ever do that again. Just a cute story about me. It's okay to be stupid. Oh, this is a good one. That's okay to be stupid story. This is not gross. Was, uh, I, uh, I never, my mom, you know, she was queen of the kitchen. And, uh, you know, one of the things I, I'll always regret that, you know, she never brought me and my brother into the kitchen and, uh, to teach us how to cook. You know, she just didn't, well, you know, I, I understand. She was a school teacher, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's a lot of, well, you know, she comes home and that she just wants to relax and, and do her thing in the kitchen, just like me going hiking. And uh, so I never, ever learned anything about cooking. And uh, so, you know, one day I, I decided I was going to make spaghetti. <laughs> now, now, did I read the directions? No, I'm stupid. And uh, so I just threw the needles, noodles and the, and the hamburger and the tomato sauce all into a pan and just started getting it going. And of course, I wasn't paying attention to it. And uh, next thing I know, the pan, there's fire coming because I was trying to get those noodles to, uh, you know, you got to boil them for eight minutes. I didn't know that. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get the noodles to soften up so that I can eat the stuff. So, of course, I got the flames way up, you know, and they, I, they weren't softening up. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Why won't this thing turn into spaghetti? Next thing I know, there's <laughs> a raging fire in the kitchen. Almost burnt the house down, man. I mean, it was, I mean, luckily I got it out and not, not, not too much damage, you know, so that was kind of crazy. The other one was, uh, I was doing the same, same house, as a matter of fact. I was, uh, we had a grill and uh, I'm out there trying to light it. And of course, you know, stupid me, I'm not, uh, I'm not paying attention to, the, I mean, the gas is on. And, you know, and it didn't light, you know, and the gas is still going, you know, and I try to light it again, you know, and this went on for, for a little while. Well, <laughs> what happened? That propane had built up down inside that grill. And when, when I finally lit it, it looked like a nuclear explosion. And, uh, of course, I had my face over top of the, the grill. And it burnt the eyebrows right off, <laughs> right off my head. <laughs> and, and my roommates, I think they were inside watching a football game. And they, of course, it was a blinding flash of light, you know, just like a nuclear bomb. You don't want to look at it. They didn't know what was going on because there was no thunderstorms or anything. It looked like a lightning strike, you know. And I came in and my hair is smoking. 
and my eyebrows are singed <laughs> and so I just thought that was a cute story I uh, how stupid can you be so you know the moral of the story is if the grill's not lighting be sure and shut the propane off let it air out a little bit and, you know get it going again try to light it again so or buy a new grill you know back then we were dirt poor so we couldn't afford a new grill that's why I had to fight with that old one so that is another cute it's okay to be stupid story there you go here's two more good ones it's okay it's good to be stupid was I I was working in a warehouse and I you know back then I did not understand how to operate a table saw um, I mean you know you think you do you just put the wood on it and push it through right well uh, what can happen is I had a, a door that I was cutting and, uh, and and if you if you got the side rail up it just it pinned that door and it, you know it's a big saw you know and man <laughs> I'm glad I didn't kill anybody but I mean it, it picked that door up and I mean it launched it right across the warehouse like a freaking you know bullet and I mean that door I bet it went a hundred yards maybe even further through the air I mean if that thing had hit somebody it would have killed them you know so that was that's one more story about it's okay to be stupid the other one was I had a friend of mine and I don't even know how you do this but he was using you know one of those miter saws and uh, I guess somehow he got his his thumb in the way <laughs> he just he cut his finger off I mean I, I'm like man you know I'm because you know I know I have been kind of stupid with the circular saw holding that wood real close to the blade you know but man I mean when I'm doing a cut like that I mean I am I am super careful you know I mean it, you, you're I guess you, if, it, if it, it twisted on you you might drag your finger into the blade so I have done some stupid cuts but I've never seen how you could just get your finger right in there to cut it off all right, that's two more good stories. Oh, this one's kind of gross, maybe not so gross. Uh, you know, back when I worked in Washington, D.C., I, we had a pretty crazy, we were a contracting company for the government, um, basically doing documentation um, systems. You know, I was the programmer. And uh, so uh, we had this one girl, Colette, and uh, she was, gosh, she was drop-dead gorgeous, man. I mean, you know, and every guy in the in the whole office was just drooled over her and she she loved it you know she thought it was fun I no sexual harassment or anything it was just you know we'd, we'd go out and we'd all go drinking together and uh, this one particular uh, uh, instance we were out uh, drinking and uh, I don't know what what happened I it might have been Chris my boss uh, and uh, she took her shoe off and I guess it was on a dare you know it was on a dare and uh, so we all uh, we, we filled that shoe with beer and everybody had to take a drink out of it and uh, so I mean can you imagine drinking out of somebody's shoe I mean who knows she might have had foot warts or who who you know even though she's a beautiful beautiful woman but uh, anyway that's that was a cute story I mean how many times have you drank out of somebody's shoe <laughs> I, I don't know maybe maybe you have and I'm not unique in that regard you know, maybe I'll just finish this uh, It's Okay to Be Human story off with a, a light touch, you know. Nothing nothing gross here. Nothing to, nothing, well, I don't know. No, it's not really stupid either. Um, in fact, I was very smart. Um, and I might have told this story in another video. I don't remember for sure. But uh, I had this uh, neighbor. She lived across the street. She's 19 years old. I was in my 20s at that time. Man, was she beautiful. Oh, my God. And she had a, they had a hot tub outside. And uh, this was, uh, you probably don't remember, I think it was back in the 80s. Uh, but the snowstorm came in on Washington, D.C. Uh, devastating snowstorm. And uh, in, the, in the morning, it was only four inches of snow on the ground. But back then, I had a Mazda 626 rear-wheel drive piece of crap. And uh, I couldn't, it won't go anywhere in the snow. And so I couldn't get to work. I had to call in. I said, look, man, I just can't make it. And they're, you know, oh, man, they were pissed off. What do you mean you can't make it? You know, this is back in the day when, you know, you, you didn't show up to work. You were fired, man, you know, and especially if you don't get there on time. And I just said, I said, man, I can't make it, man. My car is spinning all over the damn place. I said, I'm just not going to get out. on. I didn't want to get out on the highway with it. Imagine, you know, not only me, but I might kill somebody. I said, you know, if you want to fire me, fire me. I don't care, you know. Well, <laughs> that's no. So anyway, I went over to the neighbors and took a bottle of wine and uh, maybe some champagne and so me and her we got we got in the hot tub and just was watching the snow come down 
and uh, just getting drunk and having having a lot of fun let's just put it that way you can use your imagination and uh so i mean but the snow just kept coming and coming and coming and uh so and, but you know we're just getting drunk in the hot tub i didn't even know what was going on well uh the next day <laughs> Because, <laughs> you know, after you wake up, you know, you're like, wow, I wonder what happened yesterday, you know. There was, I mean, that snowstorm, I think it was, it was over 24 inches, maybe more. And what had happened was uh, the people that had gone to work that day, and this is probably why I did not get fired, they all got stuck. Uh, they were trying to, a lot of them were trying to get home and the cars got stuck on the highway. And it, it was so bad. They had to plow the cars right off the highway to just so other cars could get through. And some of them, it took them, you know, eight, ten hours to get home from, from work because the snow had built up so fast. And, and the government, uh, all the government employees were out on the roads trying to get home. I mean, it was devastating. And uh, and it and I think another storm came in right after that one. So I got, I loved it, man. I had a whole whole week off of work just about with that particular snowstorm. And, and you got to watch it. And I, of course, you know, me... I'm just chuckling. I'm watching it all on the news, just smiling and thinking. It's just kind of like that power outage. That was a blessing when we got that massive power outage up in, in 2003, I think it was. And I got to work on my basement, nice and cool down there. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So, uh, you know, sometimes a, a disaster for some is a blessing for others. And uh, I'll never forget that snowstorm. That was that might have been the biggest snowstorm ever to hit Washington, D.C. And, and it, what does the government do? Now they overreact, you know. For years after that, you get an inch of snow on the ground and they would send the federal employees home on taxpayer money. They still got paid, you know, but they, you know, one inch of snow. Send them home, send them home because they didn't want a, a disaster like that on their hands. And uh, so that was an overreaction to the other side. So anyway, uh, just a cute story to, to finish off. It's the okay to be human and stupid video and uh you guys uh, peace out if i think of something else i'll i'll add it in here but uh i definitely want to put this video as the last video or last clip onto the that video all right i got another good growth story for you i you know i think of one was uh and this was uh, me i was uh trying to get down the stairs because we had these old rickety wooden stairs in the old 1930s house up in Dearborn, Michigan. And uh, I tripped and uh, I went right. I mean, these were hard wooden stairs and then at the bottom is just concrete. And uh, and I went, man, I went down hard and my head, you know, it knocked me out and I hit the floor. And uh, when I woke up, it was bizarre because I couldn't see. And uh, and. What had happened was the blood that had run out of my head, I guess back then my platelets were pretty good, because it had actually crusted a little bridge from my head down to the floor. Uh, if you can just picture it like that, you know, like imagine a, a bridge, it wasn't even, and so that was what was covering my eye. And uh, so when I did finally move my head, you know, that, that little bridge of blood just broke off. And uh, man, there was, there was blood everywhere. That was one, of course, I, you know, I had to go to the hospital and, and then went through uh, physical therapy after that because I had hurt my neck too. Um, but uh, good gross story for you there. Lots and lots of blood and that crusty little bridge going from my forehead down to the, the floor. So there you go. That's another good story. Here's another, okay, it's, it's okay to be stupid. Well, in this case, it wasn't, unfortunately, and that's not his fault we had a security guard and uh you know they had to they would go into the computer rooms and on their patrol and uh, this is during off hours at a, a corporation that i worked for and uh you know there's you got the big red button on the wall and that's there for, you know if you ever work in a data center in case of an emergency so if somebody's being electrocuted um you, you can take the data center down hard because uh, i think it might be required by law and uh and you know and then and hopefully that person won't die you know so uh but i've never seen that button ever used i've never seen anybody electrocuted thank god but uh, anyway the security guard thought it was the uh, light button <laughs> he hit that sucker and the whole data center boom right down and uh you know and, and to tell you how petty 
the corporation was, because they should have had a box over top of the button saying, do not touch this button except in case of emergency. So it wasn't the security guard's fault, you know, in my mind, um, but they fired him. Right there on the spot, he lost his job. And I thought that was pretty petty, you know, because, you know, in that case, it wasn't okay to be stupid. But, I mean, come on. I mean, the guy... Now, you should have known if you got a big red button, that it's probably not a light switch. <laughs> so, I mean, I admit he was being stupid, but just another, another, it's okay to be stupid. Well, in that case, it wasn't okay, but uh, still, I'm sure he got on with life and hopefully got another job somewhere else. Man, I hadn't gone more than a few feet before I got my, my this is, a, this is, it's okay to be stupid and human story. So, uh, my roommates were out of town and I was, Back in college, I was dirt poor. You know, my, my parents, uh, they didn't give me any spending money per se, and you know, they felt like I could work, but I couldn't, you know, I, I'm, I'm too dumb, you know? I could not work and go to school. And you know, back then you were only making 3.35 an hour anyway, so what's the point of, of working? I mean, you're not gonna make enough money to matter. And, uh, and it was impacting my grades, you know, my, my school, my schooling was more important to me than anything else. So I always depended on the, uh, the cafeteria food at the college. But, you know, when, when everybody would go on break, you know, everybody go away. And, of course, the cafeteria is closed. So what are you going to do for food if you got no money? And uh, so I don't know who caught the fish or if they just bought the fish. But it had been in the bottom drawer of the refrigerator. And uh, I pulled it out. And this is uh, it was, it's just stupid. But, and it was slimy, man. It was all slimy. I'm, I'm trying to gross you out. I mean, it was nasty. But I thought, you know what, man? If I just cook the ever-living hell out of this, I'll kill any, you know, anything that's on it because I was hungry. And I just, I just wanted something to eat. And uh, so I, I got that fish down. And uh, I, I guess it, the classes were opening up the next day or something. I don't know. But, or no, I guess it was still closed. But I got, you know, of course I got deathly ill, food poisoning, right? I mean, the worst case of food poisoning. I, I, I was lucky to live through it uh, for being stupid. And uh, so I got into the, the um, I guess, the college infirmary, which come, you just think of it as a hospital. And they get stuck me in my own room. And, uh, you know, for all night long, I mean, all I could do was just just fly into the bathroom and and the thing was you know I was so sick it came out of both ends sometimes uh, practically at the same time so you never knew whether to put your face in the toilet or put your butt on the toilet and you know sometimes you didn't make it either way so I was I had crap going everywhere and puke going everywhere you know and then and then you're you're puking into your own crap because you don't even have time to flush the toilet you just you just killed over the damn toilet and, uh, and so, you know, then that's gross too, because, you know, now that, 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 uh, that stuff that you, that you shit into the toilet is splashing up onto your face because you're puking into it, you know? Check that out. It's pretty cool. A little swinging vine. And uh, so, uh, <laughs> tried to hit me in the face. So, you know, that's, a, that's another good gross story for you guys. I'm trying to really gross you out here because I got a bunch of them, you know? Uh, let's, let's see if I can dredge up a couple from the military. That'll, that should get you going. You know, luckily, these are, are not stories about death and, you know, uh, destruction or any of that, you know. Just, uh, just it's okay to be human, people. This is, this is what life is. It, you know, you can be depressed. You can, you can be stupid and give yourself food poisoning. You can, uh, you can be on a hike and have an emergency. And, uh, you know, and that was another thing I forgot to tell you. When, if you do have an emergency, see, I'm out here. What would I do? I'd just run right over here with my toilet paper and uh, and I would take, you take your pants off. I know that some people are shy. You're out here, no, who's gonna see you? I mean, who's gonna see you? Do you think a plane, maybe a satellite might zoom in on you? I mean, but you know, but yeah, just just get off the trail just a little bit and do your thing, man. That's what it had, you know, not try, and same with backpacking. You know, there was a number to, oh good, this is another good one. Oh, I like this one. But uh, I guess it's not that gross, but but anyway, I, I'm backpacking Isle Royal, and uh, I don't know what happened. It just it just came on me like a tidal wave, once again. And this was this was the first time. Well, maybe 
I, I, wasn't, I don't know if it was the first time I ever learned to take my pants off completely, but I knew, I knew it was an emergency. I mean, and uh, so I just, I was ripping everything off because sometimes, you know, you gotta, you gotta hurry up. And uh, you know, if you, if you, if you got a toilet nearby, it's okay because then you just drop the pants and sit down. But not in the woods. You gotta get everything off. And, uh, and that was a, that was a ripper right there in the woods and uh, you know and I'm thinking oh my god I gotta f and you know those days you're hiking eight miles ten miles sometimes and so I don't think I was more than halfway or less than ha I was less than halfway through the hike and I'm thinking man if this keeps happening to me on the way luckily it was just that one time so uh, okay to be human folks it's okay to be human